Hello everyone, Six Speed Dakota here, and that's my wife and I on our wedding day, in case you forgot what I look like. So, we're going to be doing something a little different today, I'm going to call this Six Speed's Lectures. So we're going to, since I enjoy spreading my knowledge about stuff, I'll be doing a How Stuff Works kind of lecture style video. So today's lecture is all about the EVAP system. So, the Evaporative Emission System, or the EVAP system, we're going to talk about what is it for, how does it work, the components, modes of operations, and also some potential system malfunctions. So why do we need an EVAP system? Well, back in the day, back in the days of carburetors, we didn't have any kind of way of capturing any kind of fuel vapor. So basically the carburetor and the fuel tank would just be vented right to atmosphere and you'd get raw gas coming out. So the harmful effects of hydrocarbon emissions, it's one of the major con contributors of photochemical smog. It's harmful to our health, causes respiratory problems, and it causes cancer. And the last thing, it's a waste of gas. You're basically evaporating your hard-earned money, especially with the price of gas nowadays. So how do we capture the fuel before it lets it get into the atmosphere? So the early version of an EVAP system back in the days where we still had a carburetor was that we have the, basically the same setup as we did before, but now we have a charcoal canister which the fuel tank is vented to, and the charcoal canister absorbs our fuel vapors. This goes to a thermal vacuum switch, which when the engine is warm, will actually open up and allow the engine to draw the fuel vapors out of the charcoal canister. And there's a one-way check valve at the top of the charcoal canister to allow air to get out, but not to be pulled back in. So when you refuel your vehicle, it doesn't uh, gurgle back up the fuel neck, filler neck as you're trying to put, uh, put gas in it. So it allows the air to escape as you're filling the tank. And of course, we still have raw gas vapor coming out of the carburetors. That's just an inherent design flaw with them. So the EVAP system components. We have the charcoal canister, which has absorbent charcoal that captures the fuel vapors as they evaporate from the tank. The purge valve, which is commanded open by the computer or the PCM to allow the engine to draw the fuel vapors out of the charcoal canister. This only does this when the engine is at operating temperature. It's only commanded by the PCM when it's at operating temperature. The purge valve, without it, the charcoal will become saturated with fuel if you cannot purge the fuel vapors out of the charcoal canister. And it's used in conjunction with a pressure sensor to test, test the system for potential leaks. This is a normally closed valve, which means it only opens when power is applied to it. We have the pressure sensor, which monitors the vacuum in the EVAP system. And this is used for self-leak testing. The vent valve, it allows the air into the in the fuel tank to be displaced when adding fuel to the tank. My wife's car has got a problem with that, and it clicks the pump off about every dollar. It is a normally open valve, which means that it closes when power is applied to it. And we have the fuel cap, which may seem like a very minuscule piece, but it is actually quite important because it seals the fuel system. But it also allows us to put fuel into the tank. And of course, our fuel tank, which stores our liquid fuel. And that, now that we put the fuel cap on, is sealed from the atmosphere. So here is our modern EVAP system. We have our fuel tank and fuel cap, we have the fuel pump, and we have the intake manifold, just kind of the general components of our basic block diagram engine here, or fuel system, sorry. We have the charcoal canister, which captures our evaporated fuel vapors. We have the EVAP purge valve, commanded by the PCM, which will allow the engine to suck the fuel vapors out of the charcoal canister effectively purging the charcoal canister, hence the name purge valve. We have the pressure sensor, which basically monitors the vacuum in the EVAP system when doing a self-leak test. And we have the canister vent valve, which vents the system to atmosphere when the vehicle is shut off. The three modes of the EVAP system are vent, purge, and leak test. So vent mode is when the vehicle is shut off and this allows for air to escape the fuel tank due to thermal expansion of the fuel as well as refueling. So basically as our fuel expands because of heat or contracts, again because of the change in temperature, it allows the air to get in and out 
of the system without actually venting the raw fuel directly into the atmosphere. And this also allows us to refuel the vehicle so because it displaces the air inside the fuel tank. Now it opens the system to atmospheric pressure and no power is supplied to any of the components. So our vent valve is open and our purge valve is closed. Vent mode means that the canister vent valve is open which allows the fuel tank to be vented through the charcoal canister to the atmosphere. Okay, so in purge mode, the purge valve is open and the vent valve is closed. So both valves have power applied to them. And this draws the fuel vapors out of the charcoal canister to be burned in the engine. So in purge mode, our canister vent valve here is closed and our EVAP purge is open, which allows the vapor to be sucked from the charcoal canister into the intake, effectively purging the charcoal canister of any raw fuel vapor. Now, leak tests. There are two different kinds of leak tests. We have a gross leak and a small leak. And there's three different types of leak detection methods. We have engine vacuum leak detection. We have a leak detection pump. And we have something called NVLD or natural vacuum leak detection. So in the engine vacuum leak detection method, basically for a gross leak, what it does is it opens your EVAP purge valve right here and closes the canister vent valve, almost like it is purging the system. If the pressure sensor here doesn't see a vacuum in a set amount of time, then it'll set a fault. So the pressure sensor monitors the vacuum on the system. If it sees that the vacuum is building slowly or no vacuum at all, when the purge valve is open, the system fails the gross leak test. So for the small leak detection method, basically after the gross leak detection has occurred and passed, it then closes the purge valve and holds a vacuum in the system. Since our canister vent valve is closed, the system has to hold a vacuum. So it only occurs once the gross leak test is passed, since you can't really test for a small leak when you get a large leak. The purge valve closes and the vent valve still remains closed, which holds the vacuum on the system. And the PCM will monitor the vacuum on the system, and if no loss of vacuum is noted after a set length of time, the system passes the small leak detection. So the pros and cons of this, it's simple and effective, requires no additional parts to detect the leaks, but it kind of requires a bit of a lengthy driving cycle, which can make it difficult to complete the test and set the EVAP system ready monitor so you can go in for an emissions test. So the leak detection pump, it uses a vacuum pump to test for leaks, and the PCM monitors the duty cycle to run the leak detection pump as well as the vacuum on the system. So basically if it requires a lot of juice and a long length of time to build the vacuum up, it's gonna set a fault for an EVAP system leak. So basically this is the same type of setup. So we close the purge valve, we close the canister vent valve, and then the pump will actually suck the air out of the system and apply a vacuum. Pros and cons to this, it works under any driving condition. You can run a self-test at just about any time, doesn't require a specific driving cycle. And the, vac the only thing is that the vacuum pump can be problematic, especially when you're in up in the rust belt and stuff like that, you got a lot of road debris. It can kind of plug it up and jam it up, and then you end up with uh, a system fault. So the natural vacuum leak detection this is very common on Chrysler vehicles, pretty much all of them use it. And it uses the ideal gas law to detect leaks in the system. So it uses a very sensitive vacuum switch built into the vent valve to detect a drop in pressure of about an inch of water, which is about four tenths, sorry, four hundredths of a PSI. So the ideal gas law is PV is equal to NRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, and R is the ideal cast constant, and obviously T is temperature, I forgot to put that in there. Air is an ideal gas, and thus the ideal gas law applies. So in this case, V, R, and N remain constant every time the test is run. So our volume doesn't change, our ideal gas constant remains constant, and the number of moles of air will remain the same throughout the testing. Now the pressure varies linearly with temperature because of this. So as we can see by my drawn out graph here, the pressure increases as the temperature increases.
This is the MVLD solenoid. Basically, this is built into the canister vent valve. When the solenoid is de-energized, it allows the system to be vented to atmosphere. Now, essentially, this comes in from the canister here and heads out to a remote filter. So basically, you don't introduce any contaminants back into the system. Now, this right here, this diaphragm here, when a vacuum is applied to the system, closes this vacuum switch. Now, this vacuum switch is very, very sensitive. It can detect that one inch of water vacuum in the system. And, of course, our electrical connector to the PCM. So it can uh, energize that solenoid, and it can also get information from that vacuum switch. So this is basically how the NVLD system works. So when you shut your vehicle off, the NVLD solenoid remains closed, energized by the PCM. The EVAP system is closed, the purge valve, which also is, which is in its rest state, no power applied to it. The NVLD solenoid contains a pressure sensor, so we don't need an auxiliary pressure sensor in this case. So it monitors the pressure on the EVAP system. So what happens is after the vehicle is shut off, the vent solenoid will remain closed, and as the fuel tank temperature drops, so does the pressure in the system. Since the PCM is not actively involved, this is called a non-intrusive test. After a set length of time, of course, depending on the ambient temperature, if the vacuum switch has not been set, the vehicle PCM will set a fault code. Once the system fault is detected, the computer will then run an intrusive leak test to determine the size of the leak. So this uses the engine vacuum leak detection method to determine whether the system fault is a gross leak or a small leak. Now the test is suspended when you are under 12% or over 88% of fuel level. It is also suspended when you are below 19 Fahrenheit or minus 7 Celsius. And it suspends the test when the voltage is below 11 volts, so if your battery is dead, it's not going to test it. It also suspends the test if your barometric pressure is below 22.2 inches of mercury, which is about 10.9 psi. So if you're up on the top of Mount Everest, it's not going to run the not going to run the system test. So the pros and cons: it doesn't perform the test while driving the vehicle. It's very simple yet effective, and it's not intrusive. The only thing is that that vent filter can clog, especially with road salt and debris, and the vacuum switch can stick, causing fault codes. So potential problems with your EVAP system: we can have cracked rubber hoses. We have a stuck open vent valve, which I've seen. I've also seen a stuck closed vent valve which really isn't a problem with the EVAP system. It just makes it a pain in the butt to put gas in your vehicle. We have a missing improper or leaking gas cap. So if you just get a rag stuffed in your gas tank, that doesn't work so well. A bad vent valve, so one that has an open circuit that won't allow it to close. So basically the electrical side rather than the mechanical side has gone bad. I've also seen a bad purge valve. I don't generally see them stick too often, but somebody may or may not correct me. Got bad wiring to the control solenoids. I've seen that one before too. Okay, so let's wrap it up. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you learned something. So please feel free to leave any questions and comments below. I love answering questions and I read all of the comments. So, as for social media, you could follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash six speed Dakota, Twitter at six speed Dakota, Google plus plus six speed Dakota. And now I'm on Instagram at 6 Speed Dakota, or I've made my Instagram public so you all can come view it. And I am always here on YouTube at youtube.com slash 6 Speed Dakota. So thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys have a great day, morning, night, or whatever time it is for you. Take it easy, everyone.